Well, I can't believe it. AEW did a one hour match free on television. Somebody stop this and burn it all down. I am, of course, kidding, but hey, sometimes mob mentality does get to you. But yes, my friends, it's time to do ups and downs for Dynamite, which is going to be very tricky, because that's right. MGF and Will Ospreay did engage in some pro wrestling combat, and they went an hour. Oh, no, no. They went 59 minutes and 59 seconds because they're both very, very good at what they do. It really was something else though, so it is time to talk about it, or let's up those downs. And we also have a little bit of a problem here because nobody wants me to stand in one position and tell you what happened over a one hour long match. I mean, let's be honest, some people don't want to hear from me at all. So what I do want to do is go under the curtain a little bit and kind of talk about some of the things that go overlooked. And that is a good thing, it's not a bad thing, it's those little touches that make the magic happen. But first and foremost, these dudes did go for an hour, and somehow they kept up the most amazing pace from start to finish. Like just when you thought maybe it was hitting a little bit of a lull, they would pull out something totally different. And I genuinely sat there like I was watching a game of wrestling tennis and I didn't know what to do. And I realized, no, you're just meant to watch, Simon. You're not involved. Stop being an arrogant Alan. I mean, even if this style of wrestling isn't for you, I still think you should watch a little bit and just think about carding and think about timing and think about keeping this up for as long as they did do. I genuinely think it's one of the most impressive things I've seen all year. I mean, you have to train like a monster for this, which means it probably wasn't a last minute thing. When we do switch over to Will Ospreay, because we all know he's a generational talent, but this Tiger Driver story, I get it here and there. It has been a bit wishy-washy, but I'm a huge fan of it. Because it has now cost him two big matches, which means when we do get to Wembley for All In, he is going to learn his lesson and he's going to kill somebody with it. I mean, he even just lost his international title, which is why I do think we're going to rematch this whole thing when we get to August. But again, it's just these little things in a match that also had a lot of large things. That sounds way dodgier than I meant it to, but sometimes it's true. You also have to face the fact that surely this has to now be considered one of the best matches ever on AEW Dynamite. If you genuinely are that, oh, this happened on free television, don't worry about it. I can give you my PayPal address and you can throw $50 my way. Then you'll be happy. I tell you, I'll be happy too. I mean, you really could have put this on any single event, even if I hosted Simon Miller's goofy wrestling pro wrestling extravaganza, which makes absolutely no sense if I could figure out a way to do MJ versus Will Ospreay, even if it was their guy's 772nd match, I would figure out a way to do it. You also had MGF bailing at the start and just being a massive asshole when, yes, he saw a sign in the crowd and he ripped it up. Now, I didn't actually notice this at first, but as the wonderful internet did tell me, apparently, and I did go back and look at it, I think you are right, the sign read, Simon, give me it up. So you have no idea how much I howled at that, and no, I don't think MGF knew what he was doing. He just saw a sign and went, ha ha, let's get rid of it. But my word, I did a dance of joy because I'm a massive nerd and I'm a massive geek and I'm a massive art. But whoever you are, you are a soldier of honor and you are getting it up. I suppose also doing moves he hasn't done in years, such as the flying flip-flop space bomb thingamajig. That's not what it's called, but who cares? He was doing moonsaults and he was landing on his feet. All the while, both guys are just sprinting and sprinting and sprinting. And they're never slowing down. And that's one of the reasons they duped me. I didn't think anybody was going to be able to keep this up for an hour, as I keep telling you, but by Jove they did. We also made sure there were plenty of times where it looked like William could have won, like when he hit the Oz cutter, but MGF rolled to the floor. And of course, don't forget Osprey's shoulder went out at one point, which is when Freeman walked over. It's like, get out of here, doctor. You think I care about an injury? No. Now I'm going to rip that thing from its limb which he tried to do, meaning later on, the doc was back and he kind of shoved William's shoulder back into place. I know it's not real, quote unquote. I was like, man, that was disgusting. They even had wonderful shenanigans in the crowd, because at one point, a little girl, as Will Ospreay was holding MGF, just started whamming him in the stomach. Do you know what Max did in retort to this? He flipped her off. Then this only happened for a few seconds, but I implore you to go and watch it. If you have any kind of a heart, it will light up your entire life. And now I don't think that we should encourage this with all audiences, but again, let's just call a spade a spade. It was pretty damn cute. Yeah, Osprey even hit a crossroads. And before he did, he turned to the camera and did a little wink because he wants to set the internet on fire. When we were getting style clashes into the ring, apron, the hardest part of the ring, we were getting style clashes from the second rope. This thing was like a novel. It would have been a damn long novel too, but I could have got sort of halfway through the novel and gone, man, I've only been reading this for 20 minutes when actually it was going to be 45. 
didn't explain myself very well there, but look at me, how can you be surprised? MJF even hit that big elbow drop through Aaron the announce table, which had double meaning, because it was that move that took him out last year. So he was taking risks too, and I want to make that very clear. Will Ospreay was the man, MJF was the man, and they just had great chemistry together. They should go and take signs. The counter's reversals towards the end was also like watching an episode of Looney Tunes, and man, when Ospreay hit that Oz cutter and the Spanish fly and essentially got the hidden blade, when he only got a one 2 ooh, I stood up, I looked around my room, and I was like, well, what is happening? How have we got here? This is absolutely redonkulous. Max also spat in Will's face with a hot couture, where he also fell down, and he missed a hidden blade. And that's where this thing just went totally off the rails. We made it very clear, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, William Ospreay is going to win. When as soon as he couldn't cheat, MGF basically went and cheated. Because he realized that even though Osprey had him in the Tiger driver position, this schmo wasn't going to be able to do it because he does have a good heart. So he shoved Will into the referee. He got the diamond ring. He smacked him right in his face. Osprey went down, and I mean it. They even had a timer on the screen. He got the one, two, three with like one or two seconds left meaning. If this had happened even like the teeniest bit later, it would have been a draw. I mean, honestly, that is some really good... Shit. You also have to remember it now means that MGF is the brand new international champion. And my gosh, we sold this afterwards. Will was all woozy goozy and Maxwell had to get oxygen. He had no more air in his lungs. Now, I'm not going to say I'd have no words because I just gave you a bunch of words, but not in my wildest dreams did I have expectations to this level, even though I knew going in, it could have been a match of the year, but man, they took that and they just smashed it out of the arena. So it's without doubt a match of the year candidate. And if we do do it again at all in, that is going to be a match of the year candidate too because even if they went to the ring and played checkers followed by chess and then just looked at each other i'd be like man that's so great because sometimes people just work so you won't be surprised to hear it doesn't just get an up it gets a golden up and listen i understand an hour is a long time to try and spend in your busy life but if you do have those 60 minutes it gets the simon miller you should watch this seal of approval i don't think that's gonna catch on but this did flub me sideways. When we got some blood and guts news, why not? The short version is Mark Briscoe was well aware that he did need some partners. And even though he does have Swerve Strickland, which is a pretty good guy to have by your side, do you know who have now been tagged in? It's the acclaimed. That makes sense. They don't like the Young Bucks. This is happening next week too. And by the end of the night, we were going to find out who the fifth person was. But in terms of AEW just having banger shows, well, they are riding the wave. When it was time for Chris Jericho's TV time. That made me laugh. What a 180. Now you know my thoughts on the gimmick and you know my thoughts on talk shows, so I was kind of torn here. But as ever, Chris just makes me laugh, as does Big Bill, as does Brian Keith. That dude is so mad, and we don't even know why. Jericho also made sure to run down his CV, because of course we are on Dynamite 250. And I think he called us our branches, and rest assured, when it gets to Dynamite 500, <laughs> Chris Jericho will still be here. Look, that is in five years' time. Maybe he will. He then showed footage of Samoa Joe and Hook basically being killed and admitted that he was the perpetrator. So I really thought about this. I was like, I'm pretty sure it's a crime. Like, if I set fire to somebody's face and take somebody else and throw them through a wall, and then I come out on live television and say, I definitely did this, the police are probably going to arrest me. So bring it down. Crime counter goes up by one. Who's then going to give us some more teachings when he got interrupted? It was by none other than Minoru Suzuki. He also had a contract for an FDW title match, which Brian stole off him. And he had a mini meltdown. He was like, wait a minute, I don't want to do this because it says you're fighting next week for that FTW title and that me and Big Bill are banned from ringside. You gotta do what it says. They all look like sad pandas. So Suzuki took advantage of this and he head by Chris Jericho. And then do you know what he did? He did the wave and went, hey guys, this is why Suzuki will always be one of my favorite people in the world. It looks like he's going to murder you, but it'll also be absolutely hilarious. This should be fun though, and given the next week's episode of Dynamite is another big one, because it is blood and guts, why not have two legends go at it? Like, I really don't think we need to be negative Nancys about that. Give it enough. When the Elite replied to Team AEW, they too aren't very happy. Matthew Jackson isn't bothered though, because by next week they will have all the power and maybe even the gold, because they are going to do such a number on Swerve Strickland, he is going to have to vacate the World Championship. I was like, man, that is a really, really fluked up stuff to say. Mercedes Monet then walked in and thanked them for banning Britt Baker from the evening. And these guys have such good chemistry. When Akada was there, and he asked Monet to do her dance. 
She did. I kind of was like, oh my gosh, I'm so hot. It's so hot in here. Because basically, he got the hots for Mercedes. So I was just on the floor after this, and I know a lot of people don't like how AEW has treated Okada. I do. He brings so much joy to my life. I watched it twice, and I laughed out loud twice with Shaw. It means I'm the problem, but I'm wearing the t-shirt for that reason. I'm giving Okada an up. When we went right into Mercedes Monet versus Nina Rose, and it's a round of applause for these guys too. They already had quite the task ahead of them coming off that Will Ospreay MGF match, but Mercedes has just found her lane right now, and we do not praise Nyla Rose enough. As it is Dynamite 250, it feels like the right time to say she has been there since the beginning, and everything she's basically done has always been entertaining, and this was just yet more evidence of it. I mean, at the start, Monet was trying to use her speed to outdo Nyla's power, and when she went for this Tornado DDT, Rose stopped her in her tracks and basically shouted, what? What are you doing? I threw her across the ring. Once again, I was chuckling away. It's the kind of levity you need. Nyla then wrecked her with that awesome flying knee when they too got into some wrestling tennis. When I think the commercial break may have screwed Rose over. Now, I never know this when I'm watching AEW because I watch it on Fight TV or Triller or whatever it's called these days. So we don't get that. But all of a sudden, Mercedes had locked on the abdominal stretch. There's always an interesting name for that move. It just sounds like something that would be quite beneficial. It didn't bother Rose at all though, because she just flattened Mercedes when she hit that cannonball in the corner. And you ain't gonna believe this, she got one, she got two, she got an ooh. It meant that Monet was able to come back with the knees into the corner, given that they were near Tina the turnbuckle. They went to the top and Mercedes gave her this really cool top rope bulldog. I thought that thing looked pretty damn devastating and we should do it more. I didn't very much enjoy the story because it was totally ridiculous. Because Monet did reveal, ha ha, I've got my own DMD glove. And she went to put on the lock jaw. So what did Nyla Rose do? She just went, ah, and she bit her fingers. Now Mercedes sold this wonderfully. But as the commentators told us, oh no, she's not a dentist. She's not Britt Baker. So she doesn't know where to put the finger in the right place in order to numb the mouth. That's one of the most absurd things I've ever heard. But it's also brilliant wrestling. Give me more of it. Instantly, Monet then switched to the statement maker, I think we're now calling it, although it is just the bank statement, and she got the submission victory. And I tell you, getting essentially a tap out win over Nyla Rose, I think that's a big deal. It was so great afterwards as well because there was somebody in the crowd with a sting mask who had a Britt Baker sign, and when Mercedes went to rip that up, surprise, surprise, it wasn't Sting and it was Britt. My word, am I glad we're keeping this meme going. Mercedes Monet is brilliant as this character too because she left it like she'd seen a ghost before the wrestling security got out there and kept these two apart. So these two are just great together. I don't see why their match won't live up to expectations. And it's not even like they're doing anything complicated. They are just doing the simple things oh so well. So this is another great story that AEW has and I cannot wait to see that match. Up. We then had a quick video reminding you that Mariah May had tried to kill Tony Storm last week. But as she was about to come to the ring, we'll get to it in about four seconds. Before that, though, we did see Jack Perry, who was all like, man, Darby Allen, you didn't have to attack Brandon Cutler if you wanted my attention, because I don't really give a crap about Brandon. I was like, what a horrible thing to say. I think it got even worse, though, because it was revealed that Jack Perry, too, had built up Brandon Cutler when he said to Darby, if you want my attention, you should have just asked. I was like, Perry, that'd be well weird. If Darby Allen walked in and said, oh, Jack, can I have your attention? We'd all go, <laughs> I'm out of here. When we got to another crazy segment of this dynamite, because here came Mariah May. And she came dressed out like Tony Storm, and she looked so much like Tony. I think some people in the crowd were like, oh, thank goodness she's not dead. Or maybe she's a zombie. The thing is, though, it also means that Mariah indeed came dressed out as her victim, who clearly she wants to kill. I'm sorry, crime counter up by one. You also have to bring in the bitch counter because she stood there for a while as everyone booed her <laughs> from nowhere. Tony Schiavone called her a bitch. I had to rewind it and watch it twice because I thought I'd made it up in my head. So I really didn't expect that. <laughs> yes, bring down the bitch counter, which is the dumbest thing I've ever introduced. Because look at it, it's up to 20 and we haven't even been going a month. May also love the fact that all of the fans had seen what was coming a mile away and it was only Tony Storm that hadn't. And this is why she stretched it out for so long because it was just so fun tormenting this poor girl. I was like, man, you are really, really horrible. However, when she did see the big lights of Wembley, she realized I have to go and win the Owen Hart Cup tournament. And then rather than take the old dog out back and shoot them, why don't I just do it in front of as many people as possible? That's when I was like, <laughs> you definitely crazy. It's also a very good line. as She said that she's never loved Tony Storm as much as she had last week when she was bludgeoning her with a shoe. 
once again, I was having like a mini meltdown. Just dark, dark stuff. She also told us that All Elite Wrestling is now all about Mariah when she laid in the ring and rolled around. Why wouldn't you do that? It's a perfectly normal thing to do. This was really great though, and while it does kind of feel like the fans are slightly tentative to boo her because she is doing such good work, you know that when Storm does return to confront her, this thing is just going to explode and it's going down at All In. And when you go through that card, it's going to be even better than last year's. And in terms of comparing it to everything else we've had in 2024, well, it may be one of the best ones we do get. It's absolutely getting it up. When I did get confused, I'm sorry. But we saw footage of the Bang Bang Gang from Collision when Christopher Daniels walked up to them and said, listen, Jay White is injured, and therefore it is my job to take the trio's titles away from you, even though I think it's a stupid rule. And I'm there watching going, uh, excuse me, when MJF and Adam Cole were the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions, we allowed Samoa Joe to take Adam Cole's place. The Bang Bang Gang have Juice Robinson right there, and he's actually affiliated with them, he's a friend. Daniels then said he was gonna suspend them if they didn't relinquish the belts, and they did do, when the guns told us they are not scared of somebody with a father fetish, a TikTok boy, a woman from Brazil, and a lizard. Now, of course, they were talking about the patriarchy. That was quite funny. It also means that we are now going to get these two teams fighting for those trio's titles. So why didn't we just keep them on the Bang Bang Gang and allow Juice Robinson to replace Jay White? Like, it's not a big deal. And talking about this makes us mega nerds. But sometimes sense to smack you in the face and you can't make heads or tails. And again, there have been other times when this wasn't the rule. So we need to decide on the rule. It's getting it down. When we got to our main event... Just like that. So you can't say that AEW didn't go all out for Dynamite 250 because it was Swerve Strickland versus Okada. And while it was champion versus champion, no belts were on the line. That's when you could basically figure out what was going to happen. It was still a nice tease because eventually we are going to get a proper match between these two. And in the first two minutes, they were doing all this wrestling and then they got to a stalemate when they did hit the go button. And I just sat there and thought to myself, there is a hell of a lot of good talent in wrestling right now. We are lucky to get it all. I can't went for a tombstone, but Swerve was able to stop that with a flatline. And when the Rainmaker was like, well, you know what? I'm going to hit you with an air raid crash, where he also followed that up with a big elbow. When, if you can believe it, he did the Rainmaker pose. Now, this was just stupid of a card, because how many times do I have to tell you? If you are a wrestler in 2024, stop doing your poses. Stop pushing the D-pack. Every single time, you get in trouble. What happened here? Swerve did a kick up, and he went after a carder. Now, yeah, ultimately, Okada was able to drop kick him, but that ain't the point. Swerve then tried for the stomp, but instead he did get tombstoned when Okada went for the Rainmaker, but he got stomped. I was like, man, this is just pleasant stuff to watch. It looked like Strickland was about to end it too when, of course, the Young Bucks ran in to cause the disqualification, but one, AEW never does DQ, so it does mean more, and two, we had to build to blood and guts. So we were going to put some concrete down. Because eventually the acclaimed Jack Perry and Mark Briscoe ran in there and everyone was fighting when we got the highlight. Because Hangman Adam Page's music hit, we had the camera right on Swerve. And when they were coming together, you could feel the tension. These two have a forever feud. Now, I kind of did stop that because he dragged Swerve from the ring and they got into it. As the cowboy was like, how could you do this to me? And just when you didn't know what direction it was going to go, Darby and the right. Did he come through the entrance tunnels? Nope. He came from the ceiling like he was Sting. I thought that was a very nice touch. He also went right after Jack Perry. <laughs> he tried to rip his eyes out because he's totally nuts too. But of course, it just means who is the fifth member of Team AEW? It's Doink the Clown. Nope, it's Darby out. This was just such a great ending to Dynamite though and told you, well, you better tune in next week because look how crazy this is and it's only going to get more nuts. So I am going to give it an up and also in terms of the episode overall, I'm giving it an up too. I love the fact that AEW takes risks like this. We have 52 weeks of programming in a year. Don't have to stand on ceremony, Mr. Wayne. It's getting an up from me. So if you do have some time to dedicate to it, I would absolutely say you should. But before then, like the video, share the video and subscribe. Leave me a comment below and let me know how wrong I am. Then bam, click this. It's ups and downs for Monday Night Raw, which is also a damn good show. Thank you very much for joining me, my friend. I appreciate you as always. Now we'll see you very soon.